I let my emotions get the best of me. You know, uh, just can't let that happen again. It's something I have to learn from, a lesson I have to learn from. The consequences that are coming with it, you know, I'm taking full responsibility. Uh, no fingers are pointing. This is all upon me. And, uh, you know, I just want to say truly apologize to those uh, that are very important to me. I feel like I let my teammates down. Um, these guys mean a lot to me. And uh, not to be able to be out there with them is, is a big, uh, it hits me in my heart. You know, I have a lot of people that look up to me, a lot of little kids. So, you know, once again, like I said, I truly apologize. Folks, uh, welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show. That's Oklahoma State college basketball star Marcus Smart. And uh, some might say what he did uh, was not live up to his uh, last name. He's been suspended for three games for shoving a Texas Tech fan in the final seconds of Saturday's game. And uh, he tried to, uh, to block uh, a dunk attempt from behind uh, as time was running out. But uh, he stumbled out of bounds behind the basket. And as he was being helped up, he exchanged words with a fan in the front row before uh, lunging at the fan and pushing him. And uh, that was that incident. Joining us now to talk about uh, that and, uh, and much, much more is David Swerdlick, columnist and contributing editor for TheRoot.com. Hello, David. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. Always my pleasure. Right, we're going to look at that uh, incident, uh, let the folks see it now um, as we talk about it. So you, you uh, wrote a column, uh, I, I will say defending him. That's how I interpret it. Of course, it's called Three Things to Consider Before Condemning uh, Marcus Smart. What are they? Well, I was defending him, definitely, and I think the, the things I was trying to point out was not that what he did was okay. As you said, it wasn't smart, but uh, I think, number one, what was clear when you watched the entire replay was that something was said. I mean, more facts have come out since that article came out, but, you know, it was clear that Smart was about to head back into the game, and he whipped around when he heard something said by a fan. That fan was Jeff Orr. It was reported initially that the comment or the taunt might have been racial. Now, uh, of course, both Orr and Smart say that it wasn't, so thankfully that wasn't the case. But uh, I was also making the point at the time that depending on the taunt, if it was something either racial or very, uh, you know, negative or harsh or nasty, um, you know, it's, it's a question mark is what point does a college athlete have to put up with a taunt from a fan, especially when he risks injury to kind of fall into the stands making a play? And then finally, in answer to your question, you know, I just wanted to highlight this thing about we really take these college athletes to task. And I think it's very fair game to take them to task to a certain point, And it's definitely fair game to take pro athletes to task to a certain point. But when you're talking about unpaid college athletes who are participating in a university activity in front of paying customers, you know, the colleges should protect them and treat them as what they are, student athletes. Well, well oh, okay, I'm not sure what you mean by protect them. There's security at games. This was unavoidable. This is the same setup as any uh, college game or professional game. And uh, whether it was racial, which it wasn't, and originally the reports were that he, Smart, claimed it was racial when photographer investigations were done photographers fans uh, the 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 uh, uh, person himself who got pushed all of them said that there was nothing racial about the comment um, so I guess he's since backed down on that smart after not not one witness uh, backed that up but um, I mean, you, there's no excuse. There's, there's absolutely no excuse. First of all, I, I am for paying college players, but they do receive a scholarship. He's there on a free ride, okay? So it's not like he's unpaid. He's getting a, an education at a university he probably wouldn't be able to, be, to afford to go pay full price to. So, I mean, let's, I don't know how that enters into it at all. Uh, you're making it sound like they walk around with a chip on their shoulder that they're being taken advantage of uh, by the university, and anybody who says something of, interpreted as a Offensive, they, that, that, that kind of makes an excuse for them to push and, and get physical because they got a chip on their shoulder. I mean, is that what you're saying about the, 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 the point you made about playing for free? No, and actually maybe we're on the opposite side of that specific point, right, because I'm actually not in favor of paying college athletes. I do think, as you pointed out, that a college scholarship is, 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 a, is a benefit to a student who wants to bring their athletic or their academic or their musical talents to a school, and the school is giving them something in exchange for them coming to that school, but they're not being paid a salary or, or a stipend or any kind of a percentage of the money that they're bringing in to these major college sports programs, and I'm not advocating that they are, and most when you read any polls, most Americans are not in favor of that. So but how does that enter into this? How does that enter into his defense? Because, because for two reasons. 
things. One, when people, when this first broke on Sunday night, people were comparing it to situations like the malice at the palace and other incidents in pro sports. But to me, when you're talking about a college student, I think the university has to do everything it can not to throw their student under their bus. This is not an employee. It's a student. It's not, he's not a kid in the sense that he's a legal adult, but he is a college student just like every other student on that campus. And the university should be protecting them, not throwing them out there for the media, et cetera. Now, in terms of what well, wait, 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 wait. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. How'd they throw him under the butt? In other, in other words, you use that in defense of his getting physical. And I don't understand how that not getting paid and not getting a stipend excuses him in any way or takes it or lessens the lessens the effect or the or the seriousness of what he did. I don't get that. No, no, no. The, the, no. Clearly, based on the facts that we know now, Steve, th that there's there was no cause for Smart to shove the fan. And I think Smart should be very thankful to his teammates for grabbing him, getting out of the situation before it escalated. I think that, that to that fan's credit, what was initially reported as racial turned out to be it was not a racial comment. That said, I do think that that, that fan should come under the similar scrutiny to too smart because you know why a guy dives into the stands after a ball and then you're taunting him even, even no matter what you're saying that you're talking about a, a grown man a booster in relation to a, a 19 20 year old student number one and then just just the, the last point on that steve would be that again it turned out that the university gave him a three-game suspension i think that's okay that's reasonable i would have gone ejection and one game but fine it's not going to ruin his season but there it did look for a moment like people were talking about this was just some horrific thing that had happened and that he should be out for the rest of the regular season if that had happened i think it would have been totally out of proportion well see no i think a case could be made for that i mean if you know in real life you want to talk about real life as a college kid if uh if someone says to him uh you know blank you or you you piece of blank uh, at a bar or on the street, he has no right to go up and punch the guy or push the guy. He'll be arrested and thrown in jail. So I, I, I don't understand why on the court, uh, in a game situation, I mean, I think the fan should be ejected, possibly too, but I don't think ever, unless he's, uh, unless he's spat upon or something's thrown at him, and even then it's questionable, uh, or, you know, or I don't see any verbal assault that, it, that, that entitles a player, college or pro, to go into the seats and hit a fan. Okay, no, and okay, and let me just touch on that point, Steve, again, because we're talking about it after the fact, and I do understand what you're saying. B based on the facts we know now... But well, even I if he called them the N-word. No, okay. Leg it's, legally, it's, let's, play, no, let's play that game. Legally, no. on the street, he would have no, no legitimate... You can't... It, the law doesn't state if you call the N-word, if you're offended, you can punch somebody. Okay, wait, Steve, we agree on one small point. All bets are off when you're talking about out in the real world, on the sidewalk, in a bar, at a party. No, you've got you, no matter whether you're 19 or, or 50 years old, you've got to be able to maintain your composure. When you dive out of bounds, making a play, you're being helped up, you're heading back onto the court, which clearly is shown in the video. If, this is a hypothetical, I agree it didn't happen, if he had been called the N-word, I don't think I can condemn him just for shoving the guy. It's not like he injured the guy or, or anything further got out of hand, thankfully for both sides. I don't think we're at a point in our society now where a guy dives out of bounds and should have to walk away without responding if someone calls them the N-word. I, I, I don't know how I would react in that situation. I don't know how you would react in that situation. It, that is a very charged situation. You, 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 you're screaming them back. There's no, you, you can't be condoning or, or excusing or leaving open the possibility for of physical violence, this guy could have had a heart attack after he was pushed. Or some other fan might have come to his defense because he was an older gentleman and then hit the player. Now, all chaos could have broken out. We're lucky it didn't happen that way. But, but you know what? If, if, I, if I'm sitting next to him, if it's my father and this guy punches him, maybe I punch the player. I mean, and you, can't, you can't just take it upon yourself to get physical because you're offended. Look, the better part of valor for anybody in this situation would be to try and maintain their composure. I'm simply saying that, and, and again, let me be clear. Smart should consider himself very fortunate that it didn't escalate and that his teammates pulled him away. He owes them big time. All I'm saying is, is that if it had been the N-word, if it had been some of the other racial comments that were reported Sunday night, which it was not, I'm just saying I would have found it very hard to condemn him for a shove 
in the heat of that moment. It's a human reaction, even if he's not entitled to do it, even if it's going to cost him the Sportsman of the Year award. All right, we're talking to David Swerdlick, a columnist and contributing editor for the uh, Root.com here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, let's change gears and get uh, into the uh, political arena uh, just a little bit, but uh, stay with, uh, in this case, something definitely racial, but, but black on black, if you will. And uh, that is North Carolina NAACP uh, leader William uh, Barber, who made a big deal this weekend. He held a, a march on Raleigh and, you know, blasting Republicans and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but, I mean, he's the guy who is doubling down and defending himself for calling Tim Scott, black Republican Senator Tim Scott, a dummy, a ventriloquist, can always find a good dummy, Barber said, uh, and, and saying that the extreme right has picked, uh, has picked uh, Tim Scott to be their black dummy and mouthpiece. I mean, again, you know, you and I have discussed this, certainly I've discussed it with other conservative blacks and liberal blacks, and uh, to me there's not, not a, a more vicious kind of racism uh, than attacking someone of the same race because he doesn't fit into what you believe, uh, or, or a white guy attacking a black who's conservative or a woman who's conservative or Hispanic because you don't believe that they're really black enough or Hispanic enough or conservative enough. That's the epitome of racism. Okay, I wouldn't call it the epitome of racism. Here's where we're going to agree, Steve. I, I, I think Reverend Barber made a mistake by insulting Senator Scott. No matter what you think of Senator Scott's politics or him as an individual, uh, he deserves the respect that any human being should be accorded. He also deserves the, res the respect that any U.S. senator should be accorded. Reverend Barber is a civil rights leader. He's a minister. He should know that. I, I, I think that was a mistake to use the term ventriloquist dummy. Here, here's where I think... Uh, that uh, that uh, Reverend Barber is trying to make a point, even if it's not a point that I would ne not necessarily agree with. And this would be this. Reverend Barber is leading this movement right now, this Moral Monday, Moral March movement in North Carolina, but it's going nationwide. And, and one of the core issues of this fight has to do with voter ID laws, voter suppression laws. This is something that is a, is a gateway issue, a hot button issue, whatever you want to call it, for most African American voters. And so when you have someone like Scott, who on at least this issue is, you know, on the on the on a side that's counter to what the overwhelming majority of African Americans feel is is a very sore subject in terms of the nationwide efforts to restrict uh, to restrict access to the ballot box, it, you're going to have this kind of sharp criticism. It should not have come in the form of an insult like dummy, though. All right, well, we, we agree on that. We disagree on the voter uh, the, the, you know, laws, the ID laws, which are common sense, and which actually getting anybody an ID uh, will help them in their life with every other aspect of their life. If they don't have an official government photo ID, I don't know how they go to a bank. I don't know how they get money. I don't know how they go to a doctor. I don't know how they do anything. Uh, so uh, instead of uh, energizing and saying, of course, you know, let's take this opportunity to get every black, white, yellow, and red, and, and green American the, uh, the ID they need to live their lives, uh, you guys are fighting it and, and calling it racist. I just don't get that. But that aside, um, you know, I, I, I just think that, um, you know, 95% of blacks voted for Obama. So by definition, any black Republican or conservative is against what 95% of the black community did. So, you know, there's always going to be that opportunity for people like the Reverend uh, to, to trounce and pounce upon, uh, you know, blacks who uh, are not on board with, uh, with the, the majority of blacks. So at least we agree that that's not the, the way to do it, though, correct? Steve, we, we agreed that, that it was an insult and it shouldn't have happened. Steve, I, I just have to respond to one thing that you yeah, said. And yeah, yeah. We're not going to agree on the voter ID issue now, and that's fine, but I will say this, that it, it, it is to me, and I think to most African-American voters, hard to fathom that the, the, the voter ID restrictions being implemented in various states throughout the country are not aimed at suppressing the black, Latino, senior citizen, younger millennial student vote. There is, in the states where it's being implemented, North Carolina, Ohio, Georgia, et cetera, there is just of the barest minimum of statistically insignificant evidence that any elections have been tarnished in recent years by voter fraud. And yet this has been a huge push by the Republican Party. So, you know, Republican how is it stifle voter? You mean now young people can't get IDs either? Senior citizens, but no matter what color, can't get IDs either? None of these people can get IDs? Why not? I've had people one since I was a kid. 99% of America has IDs. I don't know what you're talking about.
People have IDs, I have IDs, you have IDs, most voters have IDs. We, we, we saw in the 2012 election that, uh, you know, what, one theory is that there was such a high turnout among voters of color, partly because people were incensed that, you know, people, you know, this is four years into the Obama administration. People, uh, black, white, Republican, Democrat, no one's as enamored with President Obama or any other politician as they were four years ago. But yet there was still a huge turnout. And one of the reasons is, I think, that people were incensed at the fact that this idea that voting should be further restricted. It, that doesn't mean that people, I, you're right. People need IDs in all walks of life, but when you're talking about a fundamental right of citizenship, absent voter fraud, it's 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 very hard to come to any other conclusion about what. Wait Republicans a minute! I need an ID to get a gun. That's my Second Amendment right. I can't get a gun without an ID in my in what, my town. Is that racist? Is that bigoted? What is that? Anti Second no, Amendment? First, what? First of all, that's a public safety issue. First of all, the second. First of all, I didn't say it was a constitutional right it although it is a constant to vote right. yeah it's a fundamental function of citizenship i understand some people would argue that owning a gun and, and bearing arms is a fundamental function of citizenship i'm not making it's a, that it's a constitutional right all right look I, i'm making the argument about voting right, you're not going to get health care on obamacare either without id so i mean you know i guess that's racist against senior citizens and millennials and blacks and hispanics and maybe we should waive that you have to enter social security number or you know maybe you lost the card and you're too poor to get another one i mean that's racist i mean come on we could take this to the extreme but anyway and by the way carrying a billy club as a black panther in front of a, a polling uh, place and telling whites to go back uh that's not racist according to this justice oh, no Department. no no i agree with you about that i if you want to ask my opinions yeah uh, Steve, on the black panther uh the new black panther party the philadelphia polling yeah. place what was that 2008 no they should have been they should have been prosecuted i'm not saying all right good good but I, I love ending yeah. on agreement i love of ending yeah, an agreement. Hey, David, <laughs> great. Great to talk to you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Steve. David Swerdlick, ladies and gentlemen, columnist for The Root, a uh, contributing editor uh, for TheRoot.com uh, here on The Steve Malsberg Show. One final segment left in this wonderful edition of The Steve Malsberg Show right here on Newsmax TV. The Steve Malsberg